On this episode of The Trend Talk, telenovela star Karime Lozano stops by to talk about her Hollywood crossover. We talk to the first openly transgender singer of Mexican regional music, Gio El Transformer. And what's up with all the shows about Latino drug lords? The ladies have a candid conversation. All that and more on The Trend Talk. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Trend Talk. I'm so glad to be back at work because the binging phase ends on Sunday. I'm, I was binging all weekend on a little bit of wine, food, and of course, all those shows on streaming services that are the end of me. I, I cannot contain myself. It's like you can't just eat one donut, right? You can't just watch one episode. You can't if just watch there, one episode. If it's there, you got to watch it. You got to watch them all. Right. I know. Um, uh, the first show I ever binged on, which I hadn't had that experience, was Narcos on oh, Netflix. Right. Oh, that's and a good one. And I couldn't stop watching it. Luckily, I was on vacation, so I could afford to stay in bed. I literally stayed in bed. Well, the last one that I binged watched was The Handmaid's Tale. It's so funny because sometimes advertising tricks you. I, I saw the posters and I was like, oh, this takes this is a period Sounds piece. like somebody's sewing. Handmaid's Tale. Exactly. But tale. It, no, it's very much a modern tale of a post-apocalyptic, uh, you could say, um, wow. society. But, you know, speaking of streaming and binge watching, a lot of people are binge watching on all of these narco themed shows like like Narcos, like El Chapo, like um, Queen of the South, Queen of the South, which I think is a great show and it gives roles to, to a lot of Latino actors. But I don't know. Do you think they're kind of like making they're glamorizing the narco lifestyle? Yeah, of course. You know, but is that okay? But people, is that okay? I mean, how do you feel about that? People love it. You know, people love it. And um, the shows are so well done. I mm. mean, Queen of the South not only shows male narcos, but now we got the women narcos. And it's based on a woman, a real woman narco. Right. So you can't say they don't exist. They exist. And the shows are very well done. The talent is working. Latinos are working. The only problem I have is that why so many narco shows? Okay, you got Queen of the South, El Chapo. You've got Narcos. Uh, narcos. And it's all about the narco uh, world. Why? What about the, the astronauts? What right. about the doctors? What about the accountants? What about the other side? So that's the only problem I have. I right. don't mind that these shows exist, but I do mind that that's when Hollywood thinks about a show for Latinos, it's the default. Let's go right. to do a narco show. Right. And that'll be a hit for everyone, and, and the Latinos will get work. But I want to see others, you know? And why aren't they green lighting those? Well, that's kind of like the question of the century, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's kind of like what comes first, the chicken or the, the egg, right? El, el pollo o, o el huevo. Uh -huh. <laughs> because everyone is like, well, there's no there's no good roles, but okay, there's no good writers. Of course, there's good writers. Of course, there's good roles, but... They're not green lighting it. They're not green lighting Because it. when you take a script and you take it to someone who doesn't have a sense of who Latinos are, they literally have said to my friends, why are you writing this attorney? Well, I don't know. Attorney, Latina attorney. No, no, no. You got to make this an Anglo. Right. Literally. Wow. You know, African-American roles as well. So when you have people like that who are green lighting, you know, you're never going to you're never going to get your your projects. I would love to see a Latino version of Hidden Figures, right? Yes. Because there's so many amazing stories about about women in, in either in the workforce or created amazing things in this country, but we don't see those stories. What about the movie about Ellen Ochoa? Right. What about the movie about uh, Sotomayor? Right. What about, a, well, we already have the Dolores movie, but there's so many stories that haven't been told. So right. I, I would totally binge watch those. So if you had the ideal, like, movie what would it be like if if someone said okay i have a little I'm, I'm your fairy hollywood godmother and you could do any project you want what would you want to see on screen well i would like to see my husband's uh yo solo which is about With bernardo book. de galvez who was a spaniard who uh fought and helped George Washington with the American wow. Revolution, and he was he had uh, the Battle of Pensacola. A lot of real important battles he won. He was also the governor of New Orleans. He's also the guy that Galveston, Texas, is named after. Mm -hmm. He also went to Mexico, and he passed away there. And um, he was beloved by everyone. See those stories. This is a story about America's founding. 
Mm-hmm. And it was a Latino, a Spaniard. And, and why isn't this story told? Right. Not in the history books, not in movies. Because, right. you know, heaven forbid, you know, it's not in the movies. And so who's going to look at the history books? Because the, the history books don't even mention him. The ones you study at school. So that's my ideal movie. What about yours? Well, I mean, I would love to, to do a movie about um, Sonia Sotomayor because I admire her journey so much and she's encountered so much um, even now like backlash because she in the Supreme Court justice she's obviously there's liberal judges and then there's more conservative judges and I know that she's gotten a lot of heat for some of the, the decisions or, or her you know point of view yeah. but she is such a strong woman and she went through so much when she was young and she overcame that and you know she came from a very humble background I would really like to see a, her story on on the big screen. So hopefully, listen, it'll be, Hollywood. It'll be told. We're tired of the narco movies. Change. <laughs> you got to do inspiring movies, and we just pitched two. So call right. us. Call That's us. right. And we're spe- there. <laughs> speaking of inspiring roles, we're going to talk to coming up after this break to Karime Lozano. She's done a lot of different roles. She was mm-hmm. a big telenovela star in Mexico, but she's going to come here to the Trend Talk to talk about her crossover in Hollywood. So don't go away. We'll be right back. If you're a big telenovela fan, you've probably seen Karime Lozano. She's done dozens of telenovelas in Mexico, like La Niña Amada Mía and El Manantial. But Karime wanted to try the Hollywood crossover. And she's doing quite good. She's been on series like Real Rob, Kevin Can Wait. But she sits down with Belle para comadrear and talk all about her Hollywood journey. Take a look. Bienvenida, Karime. Gracias, Gracias por verte. Me encantada. Gracias por tenerme aquí. Oh, Un placer. Of course, of course. Um, entonces, yo quiero empezar con las telenovelas. Uh-huh. You have been seen by millions across the world in some of your uh, highest telenovelas, El, el man, Manatial. Ajá, uh-huh, El Manatial. Y La Niña Amada y muchas otras. Niña Amada Mía, Tres Mujeres, and many more. <laughs> yeah. ¿Cuántos años, ¿Cuántos años tenías cuando empezaste a hacer telenovelas? How old were you? Oh, si les digo, van a calcularle. Ok. <laughs> Eras joven, estabas en tus 20. Llevo 22 años actuando. Ok. Así para ponérselas más fácil. I've been acting when, for 22 years. But imagine. you started when you were a little baby. Yes, very baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been acting for 22 years. I've been doing tons of soap operas, like you were saying, and they dub the soap operas to crazy languages that sometimes I even go to YouTube. I'm like, what language is that? And it's funny to see myself speaking, um, speaking other languages. It's very exciting, but like, I don't know, in Portuguese, in Arabic, and um, uh, Croatian and so many other languages, Russian, and I'm like, in other languages, I have no clue what they are. You did a movie called um, with Andy Garcia. It was oh, called For uh, Greater Glory. For Greater Glory. Yes. And that was filmed in Mexico. So were you cast in Mexico? Well, I was living here mm-hmm. and uh, I sent my audition to Mexico, to the casting oh. director in Mexico. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's funny, no? So um, I got the part and I was the mother of Jose Sanchez del Rio. It was a beautiful, beautiful character. I saw the I saw the film. Oh, it was, you liked it? Was it? A beautiful, yeah. It was Thank you. Beautifully shot and an interesting topic because it was about the 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 Catholic Church was trying to be driven out of Mexico by the government. Yeah, Is that the story? Uh, yeah, the Cristeros, uh, the Cristero War. Yeah, so the right. president Plutarco Elias Calles wanted to abolish freedom of religion. Mm-hmm. So he started closing churches, killing Catholics, killing priests. It was terrible. Yeah. So thank you, thanks to the Cristeros, the, these heroes. Um, they had this war and we won and and we won the freedom of religion thank, oh, thank god yes. so yeah. so here you are living in the states and you get cast to go back to mexico and you <laughs> and you work with well it was uh, edgar sanchez was in it right uh, edgar ramirez uh, uh, uh-huh it was uh and the RCA, like you say it was peter o'toole mm-hmm. which was a huge blessing um, Eduardo Eduardo it was a, a huge, huge, beautiful cast. Yeah, Very so powerful. if you guys want to check it out, uh, you can rent it, right? It, I think it's, it's in Netflix. Netflix. It's on yeah, Netflix. I think. I'm not sure, yeah. but if not, you can just look around, you know. <laughs> That's a wonderful cast. Ed, Eduardo Verastegui, Eva Langoria, Peter O'Toole, Edgar Andy Ramirez, Garcia. Andy Garcia, yeah. and Karim Lozano. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a great movie. You know, in, in Mexico, they don't teach you these things yeah. in in the history. In, in the class, how do you say the in the, the classroom? In the classroom, yeah. they don't teach you this, and so they're like, "Wow, I 
didn't know this part of Mexican history, so it's beautifully shot, like yeah. you say. Yeah, it's, it's a great gorgeous. movie. Gorgeous. Yeah. So um, you're here because you want to make the crossover, right? How hard was it coming from Mexico to the States and starting basically from the bottom? Yeah, well, it's been hard, but I'm here. Let me tell you, I'm here. I married an American. <laughs> So uh, I've been married for five years. Mm -hmm. I met him six years ago. So basically, I'm here because of my family. Who's your husband? So Michael Domingo. Michael. Domingo. No, it's not a de Placido Domingo. <laughs> Just the last name. <laughs> yes, the last name. Um, he has nothing to do with the business. Phew, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Is it easier to be with someone who doesn't have anything to do with the business? Yeah, much more. Yeah. Like he's a normal person. <laughs> but you're here now, and you're doing well. You were just in a two arc. Uh, episode of Kevin Can Wait. Yes, on CBS. On CBS. Yeah, on the closing, uh, I mean, the season finale was a blessing. And uh, I, during the summer, oh, no, no, it's going to be in the fall. Uh, Real Rob season yes. two is gonna come out, and I have an episode there too. What do you play in Real Rob? Uh, and also, Patricia and you are friends, yes? Yes. Patricia Maya, who is the executive producer yes. and star, along yes. with her husband uh, Rob Schneider. We're very good friends. I admire her very much. She's yeah. super talented, and I play her best friend in the in the show. You're also producing, you produced yes. the short film. Tell us about the short film. What was the name of the short film, and what is it about? So, the true meaning of love is uh, you can watch it in YouTube or in my website, which is. Um, www.carimelosano.tv mm -hmm. and um, there's you can find there my short film and all my social media to follow me um, so this movie this short film I directed it's my first time directing congratulations thank you I wanted to explore that side and I really really loved it and you know there's a there's a, a need for directors female directors <laughs> and especially Latina directors so thank, thank you for you. going there thank you Bill, for your support and it's about a woman in an older woman in her last days of life mm. how she reflects upon a decision she made when she was young and how this decision changed her life forever mm. so it's a reflection about this decision and it's about family mm -hmm. and the latino values mm -hmm. you know as a latina i'm very compromised and very you say compromise like comprometida very engaged 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 mm -hmm. yeah it's different in english i'm very engaged in producing, writing, and directing content that uplifts the Latino community, mm -hmm. you know? That I can show who we are, who really, you know? We are exactly. people of values, we're people of faith, we're people of family, you know? I want the world to see that. there's not enough of that on, there's on not. mainstream Hollywood it's, TV. It, and not only yeah. Hollywood, everywhere. It's sad right. that even Latinos keep doing the same things that yeah. portray us in a negative way. I'm like, no, we have to portray ourselves of who For we you. are and show the world, you know, the beauty of Mexico, the beauty of Central and South America, yes. the beauty of the Latino family. Yes, and yes. that's how I'm, I'm com I committed myself and engaged myself in that as a producer and like I said, writer and director. Yeah, okay, and, um, and now I'm gonna do another short film, but uh, we just finished producing a movie in Mexico with the wonderful director, Roberto Giro. Mm -hmm. Roberto Giro is one of the best Mexican directors. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the producers, I'm one of the actors. We have a great, great um, cast. We have Ana Lejewska, we have uh, Paulina Goto, mm. uh, we have Alejandro Sirvent, Una Servidora. <laughs> and uh, it's so wonderful. It's a, a movie called La Leyenda del Diamante, The Legend of the Diamond, and it's, um, a uh, Western. It's so wonderful. You you have so many things going. Uh, we can't even do it justice by uh, by in this interview because it's so <laughs> short. But uh, we'd love to to have you back when your film is premiering, when you're getting ready to of do course. another Thank show. You. So we'll we'll make sure we keep up with you. We're gonna put your website where we can find you. That was fun. Bell, what most surprised you about Karime? That she is so positive. Yeah. You know, she's there's no doubt in her mind that she's gonna make it. And, and she, she will. will. That's right. Coming up we have more on the trend talk, so don't go away. Con esta botella, yo te digo adiós. Tu fuiste el amor en que yo tanto soñé. Lo que a manos llenas mi corazón te entregué Y mira me dejaste, te fuiste con él Aquí te voy a esperar, si algún día quieres regresar 
our next guest is a singer who's overcome a lot of obstacles, but his love for Mexican regional music has given him a renewed passion to reaffirm his identity. As a child, his parents would let him sing and make him list, listen to Pepe Aguilar, Mark Anthony, Juan Sebastian, and he learned to love regional music. We want to welcome Gio Bravo, El Transformer. El Transformer. Thank you so much, Gio. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for letting me be here. Today. So you have so many layers because you were actually born a female. Yes, ma'am. And now you decided to you know, obviously transform into, tra por eso es el Transformer, ¿no? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you just said your mom doesn't like that name. <laughs> no, she does not like it. Transition into into male and then you're diving into this this genre of music that's so macho but let's go back to the beginning when did you know that that you know you were kind of born in the wrong body um i think since always growing up i wasn't very girly at all mm -hmm. i always wanted to be doing things with my dad and uh i never liked dresses i always wanted to be wearing boots cowboy boots and um just i was just different i can see it in my cousins but my family, we didn't really have a lot of um, gay or transgender friends, so I didn't know what it was, you know? Right. So growing up, it was just, okay, I felt different. Right. Um, till I got to high school, then I met, it was like a whole new world for me. I met mm -hmm. um, a couple of gay people, and then I started realizing, oh, I'm kind of like them, you know? Right. And then um, just growing up, I, as in high school, well, I started uh, really learning more about the gay community and then I realized what I was, you know? It, it did take me a while though to tell my parents. It, it, that's like a very hush-hush topic among Latinos. Even when they kind of suspect that their children are gay, because that's as far as they go. They can't even imagine that. Right, the it's that uncle that has never got married and nobody says anything right. that everybody knows, you know? Right, right. Like that. But, so do you, do did your parents, when did they get a clue? Was it after high school when you started realizing it or did they kind of know, especially in moms? Well, have a sense. to be honest with you, um, growing up, my, my mom, so she went from making me wear like dresses for uniform to, she got the hint. So the hint, right. it was like uh, shorts and pants, you know? But then when I became like a teenager, my dad, I think he picked up on it. So he was more oh, start buying her dresses, makeup, go get dry brows done, go get your nails done. He kind of didn't want to maybe accept what he knew in his heart was the truth, you know? Right. So, uh, so I would cry about it because I didn't, I didn't like it, you know? And then, and then like the worst thing happened like ever, my cousin had her quinceanera. Oh, and then, you had to be in Oh it. man, it was like <laughs> so torture. So you had to wear a dress? And a skirt and oh, heels and makeup wow. and just the whole nine yards. It was what, what did torture. it feel like for someone like you that you don't identify as female, that <laughs> kind of for this very important milestone celebration, you have to wear, a, like you said, feather, I mean, ruffles and heels. What did that feel like? I mean, well, it, you know how you do the baile sorpresa? Yeah. I cried through the whole thing. Like, <laughs> and people thought it was out of excitement. <laughs> People thought what? it was some excitement. <laughs> <laughs> it was so like out of torture. Like, oh, it was oh horrible. So you obviously made made the transition because right now you're actually on medication. Right? Yeah. So what? When did that happen? At what age? I started about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I delayed so much to do it was because I was scared I wasn't gonna be able to sing anymore. Uh, like my voice was gonna. I didn't know what to expect, you know. Right. Um, but then after I told my mom, and then. She's like, well, just go with your heart, you know? Aww. So then I said, okay, well, here we go. And what did you tell your dad? What did he say to you when you said, this is what I'm going to do? And when he finally admitted it or realized it, that he couldn't make um, Back in high it. school, uh -huh. he finally started coming to grips that I liked women. Mm -hmm. So then I introduced him to a couple of girlfriends that I had, and he slowly started coming around. And then once I got to the point where I told him, hey, like, you know, it's not just that I like girls. It's just I'm just not happy with who I am, how I look right. right now, and I want it to be different. And so I'm gonna, I started doing this, cause I had uh, about a month, I was into the hormones. Right. And, um, but I wanted to tell him before the changes started happening because out of respect for my father and just because I wanted him to be part of it, I wanted to tell him from me, not him from anybody else, you know? How did your, your uh, siblings, or how, how did they react? My sister, uh, Cora, she's the one that after me, uh, I told her first before anybody and I was crying I was like I'm so unhappy and I feel this way and and I feel like I always just wanted to be a boy 
So then she starts laughing. And I'm like, why are you laughing? She's like, because you're not a girl to us. To us, you're like our brother, you know? And so they, they kind of accepted it all along. But there's a really important part of your life that we didn't even delve into, which is your music career into right. this regional Mexican music, which is so macho. And a lot of females have, have a difficult time kind of surviving in that world because of, of the machismo. As a transgender right. person, what is it like for you to open with... You know, you just opened for Los Rieleros del Norte, right? right? And you're around all of this machismo. How but did they, they treat don't know you? that you were a, woman, a girl? Well, his so name is Transformer. So, so then that's where that's where the funny thing is. So before I did all these interviews where people found out that I am a Transformer, right. you know, and what that actually means on the personal level, uh, I had a couple of labels and, and uh, record companies are like, yeah, send us your music. We're really interested. You seem good and this and that. And then all of a sudden, these interviews air out. And it's like no reply from anybody, you know. And so I was like, okay, well, th that that sucks, <laughs> you know. But these are all obstacles, and and it just pushes me more because it just makes me realize that in the Latino community, we're still very close-minded. Because at that point, I'm not trying to sell you my personal life. I don't want right. you to marry me. I don't want right. you to be my boyfriend. Right. I'm trying to uh, show you my music. I'm trying to offer you my talent. You know what I mean? That's right. So it just motivates me more to keep. Pushing forward. So where can we find and hear some of your music? Um, on actually on iTunes, Spotify, on YouTube. As Geo Bravo in Transformer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. And also you're going to be having a transgender and LGBT clothing line, right? Yeah, I actually already have it in place. Um, this year I kind of abandoned it a little bit um, just because I was really focused on my musical career. Right. Uh, as of next spring, though, I am going to be picking it up again. So staying busy awesome so where can people find you again on social media uh you can find me as geo bravo el transformer awesome on twitter instagram facebook everything. youtube everything thank you so we'll much. be following you geo thank watching you so your much. career thank you <laughs> yeah for all your bravery and, and your yes. music which is also amazing thank you so much thank you well don't go away coming up we have a lot more on the trend talk Earlier in the show, we talked about narco-themed projects in mainstream media, and here we are again. That's right. I recently talked to the cast of El Desconocido. It's a mini-series that deals with Mexican drug kingpins. Take a look. Hello, everyone from the Trend Talk. We are here with the actors of El Desconocido, La Historia del Cholo Adrián, which is a new mini-series, a five-episode mini-series on Cine Latino, which you can watch on all cable satellite platforms. And we are here with Guillermo Ivan and Estrella Solis. We're not trying to portray an archetype. We're not trying to judge. We're not trying to... Uh, we're not trying to be just uh, judgmental, you know, right? We're not trying to be judgmental, and we're not trying to be like just one layer vision. This is like multi layered. It's, this is like completely different. And, and it really goes deep inside on, you know, the characters and understanding why this is happening. And I really love that there's a strong female aspect to the miniseries, and that's where you come in, Estrella. Talk to us, platícanos un poco de tu papel en esta miniserie. Sí, lo que dices me encanta porque justo es la parte femenina y somos fuertes. Tú y yo y todas las mujeres somos fuertes, ¿no? Y está padrísimo que en esta serie, por eso es diferente, es porque regularmente está eh, eh, el cholo, rudo, mal. No, aquí no. Aquí las mujeres también estamos, estamos presentes, tanto mi personaje como las demás mujeres que están dentro de la, de la serie. And I love the fact that you guys filmed locally in Tijuana with local actors. What was that experience like? Because I know that some Sometimes there's been fear in visiting places like Tijuana because of the narco uh, problem in those areas. But what was it like filming there and, and how were the actors locally? I think the local talent is just incredible. Mm -hmm. People from Tijuana is unbelievable. I mean, they are so given, so warm. They are just the best. What is the other element that people are forgetting about narco traficantes um, and, and everything that's happening with you know, around that? Well, I think they're going to learn not to judge, number one. Number two, I think that, uh, you know, uh, the audience is going to realize that we're all part of that phenomenon. We're all and part of that problem, yeah, right? Exactly. And sometimes we, I mean, we provoke certain things as well. Right. I mean, it's, uh, it's very sad to say, but sometimes you don't give the opportunity to the other person who's coming from that world right. to try something different. Awesome. 
So it, it's going to be an interesting series premiering very soon. Talk to us about July where people 28th. can watch it. Yeah. Um, on all platforms, Cine Latino is on satellite, cable, and if you want more information, there's also a website, correct? Correct. Yeah. It's going to be uh, released in July 28th. Mm -hmm. So be ready for it, watch it, enjoy it. It's going to be entertaining. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be different and it's going to be Latino as well. So you watch it. Awesome. The real version of the narcotraficante the story. The real version. Yeah. The truth, <laughs> the truth. You will get to see truthful characters Correct. right here. Ripped from the headlines. Correct. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank it was you. so nice Thanks. meeting you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. And um, El Desconocido. Vean El Desconocido en Cine Latino. And you can see the mini-series El Desconocido on a new Latino-themed streaming service called Pantalla. And speaking of streaming services, there is another streaming service, Mundo Flix, that is targeting Latino audiences, as well as Latin Heat Cinema, where you can watch The, the Trend, Trend Talk. Talk. We'll be right back. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. That's right. And I want to give a special Trend Talk Trendsetter shout out to Gloria Lucas. She's the creator of NPP. You know what that stands for? No. Nalgona Positivity Pride. You got to be proud of those nalgas. Why? Because that's what she talks about. She talks about being body positive and also eating disorder awareness. Wow. Shout out to her. <laughs> that's right. And remember to follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, because you know if it's trending, we're, we're talking! talking. <laughs>